What is the science behind the multiple gods? Can you maybe sh go uh, show me some some uh, benefit of having all these multiple gods? Beatstars.com. Uh, yeah, what's up with that? With, with the multiple gods, what, you know, and things of that nature. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. Uh, this is how I'm uh, express it. You say there's 200 gods or so. You say, well, that's the problem. How are you praying to all these different gods? Well, no problem. Well, first of all, when you say God, first of all, when you say God, right, that is the weakest meaning you could ascribe to the word nature. Because nature is all things. And in order to identify all things, it manifests itself in different capacities. So we may see Ray, and then you may say, I thought Ray was your top guard, but now you got for Tal. I thought you said Tal was your uh, top guard, but now, but now you got a tomb. What is going on? You're seeing different manifestations of the same source because there's a functional capacity of each one. You understand what I'm saying? It's just like a body. The foot cells don't do what the heart cells does. The heart cells don't do what the brain cells does, but it's all part of one body. So what you call in multiple gods is all part of one body functioning in different capacities, hence the term nature. So when we say God, this there's a it has a cannotative, uh it has this cannotative energy around it that intimates something contradictory to what nature actually is. I wouldn't use no chaser when I tell you that there are no Egyptian gods. I would tell you that. Okay? And that that's part of the mythos. So right now I'm under the presumption that you guys are scholars. Or at least purport to be. So I'm gonna tell you something that you may not have heard before and I'm gonna let you know that there are no Egyptian gods uh, let me see the board I'll, I'll just show him something real quick right if you could just hold if you could hold the board a little bit for me good looking just hold that real quick yeah that'd be cool I appreciate it <coughs> very rarely an enemy allows you to you know he holds the gun he's gonna get shot with <laughs> Uh, this is a good look. We'll make it nice. I'm, I'm bulletproof. Make it nice. We'll make I'm, it nice. I'm bulletproof. The first thing we're going to do is this, right? Now, you know what? The first thing we're going to do, we're going to show you this one, right? And then we're going to show you this one. All right, this is what we're going to do first, right? And then, all right, I mean, zoom in different ways you can, right? Okay, we gonna we, okay. Just let me know. I'm gonna just show it up there real quick. I can, see it. See it? All right. Can you show the audience what is that? I'll show it periodically. Okay, I'll show it periodically. I bet. So that's perfect. So on the top, right? This is a glyph that will represent Netir, right? But now understand that when most people are speaking uh, Medu Net Netter, that they are speaking from a standpoint of the Middle Kingdom. And that's very important. See, I'm being fully honest with you because no matter what you do after I teach you this or share this, it wouldn't make a difference based on the debate. So if we go to Old Kingdom, I like the Old Kingdom archaic uh, phonetic appreciation for this glyph because what would happen is netter would become netcher, right? Phonetically. It'd be like a TCH, right? Netcher. And I like it because you can understand the English cognate of the same. Netcher, right? By no coincidence, sound like nature, correct? And we certainly wouldn't call nature God, would we? Would you call nature God? Would you call nature God? It's making you think, and that's what this is all about. It makes you think. Would you call nature God? No, he is. What I call nature, God. That's that's. I, 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 yeah, he's the essence. That's nature, God. Does God have a nature? He has a nature. Okay, so is God nature, or is it something that God possesses? He's it. Okay, now God is nature. So it, is nature God, or does God have a nature? He says, "I am." Okay. Now, just like I said, I'm going to have a high frequency communication. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm the laity and I don't understand what you're saying. I want to know, the, is God nature? 
said, one and the same. He said, yes. he, said yes. He's wrong. Yeah. he said, I, he said, I am. He is, well, well, when you're when you're questioning somebody. You are looking for something in particular, okay, so you keep saying, I don't get it, I don't get it. I personally don't get it, so I want to know, because you said I am. So I don't want to make a presumption based on what you're saying before I move forward, because whatever it is that you say, I have to take that and move forward. So I want to know personally, when you say I am, is that an answer, yes, God is synonymous with nature, or God possesses a nature? God is it. So whatever it is, that's what he is. So... I don't want to picture him as we just one thing. God is nature. He, he's the undescribable. That's why when, I love that name. I am. Period. Doc, go home. You're a bit reluctant to identify God as nature or possessing the nature. And that's okay. Because these are questions that oftentimes are not presented to us day to day. But what we must understand is this. Right? Our ancestors keep us thinking. And before I go to that, I'm going I'm to draw up probably one more thing real quick. Just to show people something in particular. I'm going to do it real fast. All right. Let's do it like this. All right. I'll even do this. And this is probably going to uh, get the hecklers going. But, you know, it is what it is. They going I know the hecklers ain't gonna be mature enough for this. Oh, I'm coming. They gonna be mad. They ain't gonna be mad. They just gonna be ignorant about it. But before they do, I'ma show them the equal to it. I'ma just show them the equal. All right. So I'ma go over a couple of things, just so people can understand something. There's a Egypt. There's a comedic way to write numbers. You could do it in strokes. So before people say. Oh, that's what you're going to teach your children? Or what if this stuff is on the walls and everything like that? Well, we appropriate or disseminate information during different periods or during different intervals of people's lives. Much like today, you don't teach a child sex education at two or three or four years old or even at 10 years old, right? However, there's a point in time where you do appropriate that information. Oftentimes, people see things from Egypt and they actually presume that yo this is on display for everybody not understanding that they went into temples where only priests can be at at times okay so we always have to understand where's the information coming from where did they do the excavations so now boom now we're gonna touch this part right here this is your number three right and it would be Shemit or Shemit right this phallic symbol, right, would represent MT, okay? This is your place center right here. And this is a phonetic emphasis right here being T. So now you're looking at Shemit. But the, for those perverts out there that's like, oh, everything's false. No, they can draw their numbers out with symbols, okay? This is actually a word representation of it, and there's a reason behind it. So you can do the strokes and represent numbers, right? But then if we had to identify what that number means and represents in our culture, then the cognizance comes in because what they did, they took everything in their environment and assimilated it into their language, which is very different from English language. Very different. Go ahead. Go ahead. You mentioned about people may say something, whatever. If this is a, and I'm not trying to be funny. Anyway. No, no, no. I don't got a problem. Uh, are you saying this is a phallic symbol, this is a penis? And, and so, it would, but it would be represent. Okay, and then, and then you're saying that this was not to the public. This is only for the priest. No, I'm not saying and this is for the, the priest. That's the reason why. I was no, I'm not priest. saying this is for the priest. I'm saying that oftentimes when we're teaching, mm -hmm. we like to believe anything and all things when it comes to Egypt is taught to any ages and all ages. Right, right. And that's not a fair presumption because someone could a thousand years from now look at what we educated people on today. And, and, and it wouldn't be fair to presume that all information was disseminated to all ages at any time. That wouldn't be fair. So I'm just asking before I have to go through. No, no, no problem. I'm saying before I have to go through that, I would like to just go through certain points. But I just put that out there as a disclaimer because I understand that once people see anything that alludes to a breast or to a phallus, they grow immature, they go nuts, they take heed to the rumors and go crazy. So, again, now, now. Now let me say this. this That also means three That's what you're saying it, It's a representation For the word three Now this means three okay. But if we're gonna spell three In words right. If we're gonna put three Into words 
we're gonna it's gonna look like this this is the uh pictographic image why, why now, oh that's what i'm going to right now now it's not just the phallic symbol it's not just the phallic symbol what are these symbols you see this is considered to this symbol would be depicted as a placenta this is a placenta okay this is your phallic symbol and this is your t now we gotta ask this image represents seed as in semen the phallic symbol the top symbol represents placenta the bottom symbol represents food this is the equation to represent the number three if we wanted to spell it which would be shemit you heard now why is this because in, in all the numbers are this way you can write them in strokes or they have pictographic images tell them it's not me or they have pictographic images all right so now I'm gonna show you something. The placenta connected to the mother because the child needs the food and the father plant the seed. Your concept of the Trinity is right there in the number three. So whenever they think of the number three, the image that comes up is the triune, the three-part responsibility as far as procreation is concerned. Every number has a corresponding Ideographic and pictographic meaning and representation. No stone goes unturned in Egypt. Now, when we talk about resurrection arising, normally you see Kepra, right? Which is depicted as a scarab beetle. But what makes a scarab beetle so significant? Our ancestors rep identified how a scarab beetle would dig into the ground. How, how, uh, hold on. My boy. Hold on. My little brother right there. How a scarab beetle would dig into the ground. It's the only being on planet Earth that takes its dung and puts it in perfect spherical form. Rolls it, push it forth upon sunrise. You see what I'm saying? Do you think you're making a mistake? It's not a mistake. I just want to finish my flow, King. They assume you didn't know method. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. But we're going to go forward. So now what we're saying is. They took this and said, when you see this, think of rising, think of resurrection. Now, this is the question. This scarab beetle doesn't really perform this when people are observing things, first of all. It's almost like the people who knew this had a communication with that which was around them. You understand what I'm saying? So now it's like, oh, hold on. For them to know on a technical basis what this scarab beetle does, and then to incorporate that which the scarab beetle does into their language. When to know Medunetta or to know Medu Netcher, is to be one in conformity with nature. You cannot speak the language and have certain things that transpire in nature go unnoticed. You understand what I'm saying? To speak this language is to also be cognizant of what's taking place in nature. To speak this language is to say certain things in nature will not go unnoticed. There's not one thing in the language that hasn't having a corresponding Right? Or adjacent meaning as far as an occurrence that takes place in nature. You dig what I'm saying? So so now what we're going to do, now you got this. Zero, for instance, right? We got a concept of zero in English, right? But there's no zero in, in, in Medu Netcher. There's no zero. What we call it is Nefer. And we would normally put a zero and prefix it to, to Netcher, right? Because we would say that which is unseen or unknown still exists and when it comes to pass that it actually does exist in light of your ignorance it's a beautiful thing when it comes to pass so we call it nefer so zero and nefer are synonymous zero and beautiful are synonymous so when we said when we identified with our beings or our deities we said nefer netcher and this is an honorific transposition so we put Netcher first, even though it begins with Nefer, because we give honor to the capacity of the deity. So now we will say this first, even though this is written first. So we have Nefer Netcher. And lastly, you have Netcher Ru. You see what I'm saying? What you're saying is that the Egyptians are saying they only worship one God and the, the 200 plus God is different variation of that one God? That's what you're and, and, and this is what I'm telling you. Again, I'm, I'm giving you a cheat code. I'm telling you, there ain't, they ain't no gods. That's what I'm telling you. There's no gods. This is a representation of what, exactly? All the gods that you hear in Egypt is a, is a representation of what? Now, what I'm saying is there are no gods. Now, if we were trying to use God to the best of our ability to ascribe to something that is taking place or transpiring within Egypt, 
then sometimes we go along with the bill. But we all grown men here, so I don't have to talk about Santa Claus in here or nor the Easter Bunny. So now I'm keeping it a buck with you and I'm letting you know all that stuff about Egyptian gods that you've been hearing is, is, is not actually a fact because there's no word that's going to equate to that word God. Now maybe you could do Lord, maybe we could find Neb, we could say Neb is Lord, we can do that, we can see Nesut, right, or Nebet, we could, we could do all of that. But once you start talking about God, the implication of that word doesn't even have a context in Kemet until until you go probably to the Ptolemaic period or or when invaders start coming in with their ideologies. But if we talk in the old kingdom here, we, there's no God. So, so, so okay, this, so what, what so what is the replacement? There is no God. So what did the Egyptian believe then in themselves? So I ask you this question. Yeah, right. You asking what's the replacement? This is why I ask you this question. I ask you, is God synonymous with nature, or does God possess a nature? Because that there and there lies the truth. That's why I ask you. Well, from the Hebrew God perspective, is synonymous with nature. you say God is synonymous with nature. No, but what I'm saying from the Hebrew perspective. And is nature confined to the to the earth, or can nature transcend? Outside of the earth. Well, why, why, you don't, why you don't educate me in the Egyptian point of view of God? Yeah. Because the Hebrew has, may have a different perspective. No, I got a problem. The, I, I'm so, like I said, this is your time to shine. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I'm, I'm giving you but know. so much. I, I what, you what you want to know? What you want to know? Hold on, I'm coming yeah. right now. What you want to know? Egyptian belief. What What was their, did they believe in God? Did they believe in themselves? What, because, I just want to know. They, they knew all was in all. They know that nature is everything in all things you can't add to the all because where would you get it from you can't take away from it because where would you put it so the, the reason why the reason why the, the reason why the language is designed the way it is because they observe that which we fail to identify as nature and falsely equated to god they they identify that in all things that's why their language is designed the way it is that's why we have two thousand images